Okay, here for our lesson four, what we're going to do is we're going to fly to our home airport, we're going to set up a cross-country course, and then we're going to go ahead and fly it. Now, the easiest way to fly to your own airport is to, to select that airport as a go-to and then fly to it. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to fly to Carson Airport here, so we're going to go ahead and select that. We're going to go to airport as we have in the past. You can see we're actually going right away from it now. So we're going to go ahead and sensor simulation, autopilot simulator, we're going to go ahead, autopilot simulator, we're going to go ahead and engage that. And so now we're basically going to be flying to our home airport. There you go. Now, if you want to get there a little quicker, uh, notice our distance is 50 miles. We still got um, 32 minutes to get there. So we can start playing with this a little bit. We can go in our sensor simulation. We can go into our GPS and we can uh, increase our ground speed to 200. Okay, now that's going to really get us moving here. That's, all we're doing is we're just kind of fooling this thing a little bit to uh, get us to our home airport as fast as possible. Now, what's going to happen is that when we get to our home airport, since we're on the autopilot and just circle at that waypoint, as it's circling at the waypoint, we're essentially establishing ourselves at the home airport, and that's going to be our starting base. We really use our GPS as our main speed here in the situation. Okay, as we get closer to our airport, we're going to go into our GPS, and we're going to slow our speed down to basically our approach speed, so we're going to get that down to, say, 60. We can see how we're doing here. We're getting pretty close to our airport here. I'm going to zoom in. Zoom in here. Okay, now notice when we get to our airport, since we're on autopilot, now what we're doing is we're essentially circling because we're at our waypoint here. So it's doing the best job it can to keep you at that airport, that waypoint, because we're on autopilot now. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go in and we're going to slow us down, show GPS. We're going to bring our ground speed down to zero. So now we've essentially just stopped at our airport here. And we're going to go in, we're going to do a couple other things. Pressure sensors, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and raise our, our pressure here to get us to our pattern altitude. And we happen to know that our pattern altitude here is 5,700. We're going to be starting out at that. And we can see our train monitor is going off here because as we look, the direction we're pointed right here, we're kind of headed right into the mouse. We're not going to worry about right there. We're going to, we're going to acknowledge that and move on here. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go to flight plan. We're going to go in and not activate. We're going to create a new flight plan. And we're going to call this flight plan our first XC. Enter. So there we go. So now what we want to now what we're going to do is we need to go ahead and add a waypoint. So we can do that adding map position. We can position ourselves in the map here. We're going to since we're at our waypoint here, airport here, there's our map position. We can go ahead and add using map position. So that's our first waypoint. You see how we've selected that. We're going to go in and add another one. This time, let's do this by, let's see, map position from navigation database. We're going to fly down to Minden. So what we've done is we've added from our starting point here, we've added the Minden Airport. So we've got another 
map point there. Now notice wherever we select that, that uh, waypoint, no, we don't want to go that far. Our map goes to a different position. It takes a while for this thing to load. Okay, so what we want to do is we're going to fly from, we've already started at our home airport here. We've KMEV. What we want to do is we're going to want to go to this airport over here. So we're going to go ahead and add from navigation database. I happen to know that that is, we're going to page down. Yerington. So we've added Yerington to our waypoint and here we can see that that's added it right here. And then from here we're going to fly up to Silver Springs. So let's look at that. We can wait for a map to refresh. KSPZ Silver Springs. So we're going to go ahead and add. And let's go ahead and just use that. We're going to select that as our on our map here. We're going to go in and add. Add map position. Okay, so we've added our added our map position there. Now we're going to fly back to KCXP. So we're going to go in and add a from navigation database. And we're going to Carson. So we've got a nice course here. So now we're going to go ahead and exit. Okay, so here we are at the Carson Airport, our starting point, and we're going to stick with that screen right there. We're going to go ahead and flight plan. We're going to activate our flight plan. Look for flight plans on system, and we've got a couple of them here. So this is the one we just put in. So we've activated that flight plan. Now what we're going to do is go in and sensor simulation. We're going to get our speed back up. Show GPS. We're going to get our speed. Notice how our GPS speed is down to zero. We're going to get our GPS speed at 87, which is equivalent to our true rear speed. So we're going to go back 87. Okay, so here we are. We're going to go back and sensor simulation, autopilot simulator. We're going to engage our autopilot, which our autopilot is actually engaged. So we've actually started off now on our flight plan. Look at some of our screens. We can see we're kind of low here. We know that our Minden's right about here. Train acknowledge. Yeah, we can see that. It's 30 nautical miles. We know Minden is, is right about to here. We're going to go in and sensor simulation. We're going to show our pressure sensors. Okay. At our altitude, we need to bring that altitude down. We can see our altitude off to the right here going up. And we're going to bring our altitude up. And let's go ahead and cruise it. Uh, 6,700. Okay, so we're looking better. Now, here we go. So now we're headed to Minden, our first waypoint. And actually, we've already gotten there, and, and we're, we've, we've started from Minden on to our next waypoint here. See, things are happening fast here. Okay. And we're looking ahead. Here we are at our Minden. Okay, now it looks like we got a, a, a pretty big a, a big problem right here. we got a mountain. So we're going to have to go immediately into our sensor simulation, show pressure sensors. We're going to have to reduce that pressure. It doesn't look like that's... Okay, now we can see that at 10,500, we could make it over this mountain peak. 10,500. 
And we've got our uh, airspace up here. Here we go. You can see we're above our mountains here, 10,500. We can see our mountain range here. Okay, so here we got 9,500 is right in our, our peak here as we're going across our mountain range. I'm gonna go to our sensor simulation, show pressure sensors. And we can move that over here. We, we got our airspeed. We're looking good. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start descending on down. So we're gonna raise our our pressure, start descending down. You can see as we're descending down, we're nose is down, down to 10,100. We're looking pretty good here. We're well above our terrain. And we're going to try and get down to our pattern altitude of Yarrington here. We can see we're well above our terrain. We can take another look here. Okay, so we're just about at we're just about getting to Yarrington here, so things are happening fast. Pressure sensors, we're gonna go ahead and reduce that pressure as we bring our altitude down. Okay, we're coming up on our waypoint here of Yarrington. Okay, now you can see how we just hit our, our Yarrington waypoint here. And we've just turned now to our next waypoint here, which is Silver Springs. We can look ahead here, we can see scale 60, we knew Silver Springs is about oh, 20 nautical miles here, so we're, it looks like we're doing pretty good here, although we've got some train ahead. Seven thousand four hundred. So that appears to be a reasonably good cruising altitude here. And we can actually see our our path ahead. When we get to Silver Springs, we can see our our other path with our uh, flight path box is going the going the other direction. We're looking pretty good here as as far as our terrain goes. Okay, we know we're going to be there. Silver Springs is right about in this position, about eight nautical miles here, actually 10 nautical miles we can see up here, 10 nautical miles, so it looks like we're in pretty good shape here if we stay at this altitude. Okay, looking good here, we don't have any train warnings, 7,000, we can actually uh, bring our pressure sensors, we could bring our, our altitude down a little bit, 5,800, now we are getting a train warning. Probably because we're headed right into the mountains here. We're going to acknowledge that. Okay, we can see if we kept flying, we would be flying into the mountains up here. This is where the train warning is very helpful. Okay, we're down below our glide path. We can hit our pressure sensors. We can uh, reduce. Okay, we just hit Silver Springs. And now we're going to be headed back to Carson. And let's look ahead and we can see that. Carson is what? 26 miles. So again, we're getting a train train warning, 26 miles. Let's go ahead and, and see how we're doing for our... Okay, now here's a good example where this map is set to north, and then we go back a couple of pages. Now notice how this is set with track up. So we can really go back and forth between our track up and our north. Uh, okay, again we're getting a terrain 
warning here at 5,800. So let's see. Okay. So we can see that. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and raise our altitude here? So we go back to our pressure sensor, and our altitude's going to go. Pressure is going to go down, so our altitude is going to go up. Go up to 8,200. And we can see that we're, what, 16 miles from Carson. We're not going to quite make it over this. Now this 15, distance 15. So that's pretty much saying that uh, um, we're going to need to get above for our current position, we're going to have to get above that, so we're going to lower our pressure a little bit more. 9,500 now. We can see how Carson is 7.6 nautical miles, and we're going to we're looking pretty good here. We can see how we're coming in. Make it our way back to our starting point. Okay, four nautical miles, so Carson's right about here. We can see that after that, we do have some terrain that's coming up. And we should be able to go back to our pressure sensors, static pressure. We're going to bring that up. There we go. So we've reached the end of our flight plan. And there we are back to Carson. So here what we've done... And of course, once we get back to our waypoint, our simulator goes ahead and just keeps us at that waypoint. Showing a couple, a couple different ways of looking at that. So here we've started at our home airport. We've set up a cross country course. We've flown it, we've worked with our altitudes and completed our cross-country course. So there you go. So why don't you plan some cross-country flights around your area? And a lot of times, if you slow down the speed to make the distances a little bit longer, it's going to be a lot easier to figure it out as you go. So thanks for flying with me for your simulator flight setup and our lesson plans here to get you going with your EFIS flight simulator. Well, I hope you've enjoyed your tour of the EFIS simulator and what it can do and how you can use it. Have fun flying and practicing with the EFIS here.